Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and remember how in last episode I said I was going to be trying to automate this? Well, that's this episode. Hopefully you guys are ready. All right, guys, so things are going to get a little bit sp expensive early on today. We're going to have to make a few things because I want to automate the uh, this guy over here. I just really want to get that automated, just a, a semi-automated, I guess you could say. I just wanted to build the structure for me in the compact machine. Um, and we're going to do that with a builder. I already have the builder made over there and kind of set up ready to go with some power and stuff like that. Um, but we're going to get a scanner. And this guy is going to be the kind of expensive part. Now, you guys recommended me to watch uh, Direwolf 20's video on how he uh, automated this. So I'm going to kind of take uh, what his example was and apply it to uh, these special blocks here. And I think that's going to work out just fine. Um, last episode, I kind of mentioned about... Uh, the cell that they have. Uh, I think it's called the RF tools chamber, something like that. Whatever the thing's called. It's somewhere right here. Yeah, the space chamber. Um, yeah, that guy's a little little uh, weird and uh, very expensive and doing it that way is not going to be the best way. We're going to use a shape card and we're also going to use a scanner. Now, a scanner is definitely a late game item in RF tools. And uh, let's see, SC scanner. Because it requires these infused diamonds, which requires dimensional shards, which in this pack is kind of expensive. I mean, we have all the stuff to make them. But, I mean, that is, it kind of gets expensive after a while. And then we're going to use those to make the infused diamonds. Right, I should have enough. There's four. And then make the scanner, which I'm missing the actual machine frame, which is perfectly fine because we have it right here. And this is what I want to automate. So this is, I mean, just this process, especially for RF tools, um, making these, making these uh, machines just kind of get repetitive over and over again. The building part, like sitting there and watching it, I'm not, I don't mind that. The building, that's the uh, that's where it becomes painful over time. So let's take some of this, and we'll get some of that. There we go. We have some more of that mana infused steel. Accidentally jump there. My bad. Perfect. And then we can throw all of our uh, items required for this on here. And just get things going. This one's actually one of the harder ones for me to build. Because these pipes are so small, uh, once you start building with them over and over again, it just gets, you know, repetitive. And I want to get this, you know, automated for the most part. So, there we go. And that's done. Just throw that in there. And we'll get our uh, frame. Then we get our scanner set up. Over here, I already have my builder ready to go. Um, we have a little bit of power going into it. I already have my chest with uh, ready to put items into it for the copy. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting on this. And we should be ready to go for the most part. I did upgrade my pick here. Um, I ended up making an energy upgrade. This energy upgrade is pretty cheap, uh, minus the medium battery, which is just a little bit of crafting and some sulfur and blades, stuff like that. It was very cheap. And then I use this to actually charge it. You just throw it in there and it charges it up for you. Pretty, pretty handy. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get this scanner made, and then we should be good to go. Okay, scanner. There we go. And there's our scanner. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that this actually works the same way as our other stuff does. I don't know, we're gonna find out. So let's go ahead and place this down, because I want this one actually automated. Because the more RF tool stuff that we can build, the better off we'll be in the long run. Because RF Tools has some pretty cool uh, items and pretty cool uses. The only thing holding us back is making this over and over again. So, yep, definitely want to get this uh, automated for the most part. All right, so there we go. And that is ready to go. So, what I, I think I might be able to do, can I shift on you? Can only do that on the builder. Okay, so I have to set 
this card. I think it's already set to this block area because I did it with the builder. So if you set the area with this card on the builder already, and then you stick this in here and you give it some power. And it should be getting some power and you hit scan. Um, what is it scanning? Is it not scanning the whole block, is it? I don't actually see what it's scanning. It's not scanning the right side. So dimension three. Pull this out real quick. You can shift right click to pull this up. This three by three by three with your weird up with the weird offset there. Um, maybe we can change. I think we can change the offset here, right? Oh, we need to clear the offset. So let's clear the offset on this. There we go. Scan. And then on the offset, let's see, what direction are we facing? We are facing east towards positive X. So we need to go up three or up two. So we need to go to east two. Okay, so we're picking up something in here. I think this might actually help too if we, uh, if we take our shape card and we set this to like 10 by 10. By 10 like this. I think we can see more of what we're looking at. Okay. And we kind of get an idea of where our arrows are actually facing. This will actually help out a little bit. And I think I want the center here to go over one, two, three. So if this is east, this will be north. So we're going to send it north three and scan. Okay, maybe north is not the way. It's going. Hold on. How did, which way did I send it? So I get back. So north one. That'll put it in the center. And then we'll finagle it a little bit more. And go. I think the one direction is fine. East. East one more time. We're getting close. I need to go east. I need to go west. And then one south. There we go. Now we're on the corner. Alright, and then let's take the card out. Set it to three. By three. And let's see what this is now. Okay, so we're close. We're close. We need to... It does want to be in the center. Okay, so we'll put it east one. North one. All right. Is that right? I can't hardly tell. Um, I need to go up. I think that's I think that's right. I think we're on the money there. Okay. So, with that done, we can take the shape card and drop it in here, and now the shape is scanned and ready to go. Okay. And then I should be able to break this and the scanner hopefully. And everything holds its place. This is the moment of truth. Let's break all this. Oh, I know, I, I hate breaking the glass. And all the pipes and everything.
Just everything breaking. All right, and hopefully this will fix all this and make this a lot easier on us. And then I can just use the same coordinates next time we make a shape card. Where's our one basalt? There it is. Okay, let's try out the shape card. Um, I put that in there. All right, I should be able to move this though by changing this offset. Okay. Let me put the card in here, show the shape. Um, it's facing this direction, so I need to do some negatives on here. Oh, I think I can actually do it right here on the shape card. Negative six, maybe. Let's try that first. All right, so I think what I was doing was I was taking this to a negative. Um, so I did negative seven over here, and that seemed to be just fine. So I have negative seven. Um, and I think it's pulling from the center point. So I need to go one, two, three, four in one of these other directions. So let's try this. Uh, let's try positive four. And let's see if that will work. Okay, pause that. That takes you up. up. Okay. Good to know. So we'll make that zero again and we'll do four over here. And that's pretty close, actually. It's pretty close. Um, I don't know why it went down on us. Let's go one. And there we go. Okay, so it's showing that the center is still hollow. Don't know what to think about that, but um, it says that I have everything, I, I should have everything. Let's go ahead and put all the items that I need for this build in here. Just like that, and I should be able to flip the lever and it should build it for me. Oh yes. Ah, that is so good. It worked, guys. Oh, what did it do here? I don't think that affects it too much. Um, I think the last thing to test is by throwing the item in there, and then we can set up a dropper for that. But, yeah, the only other thing we need to set up is this. And then we can have this thing going. Will this work with that little hiccup over here? It does. It doesn't matter. Okay, so it builds it, it, builds it for us. Guys, we have it set up. So now I can do it for each one. And I can have a shape card for each one. I just wish I could label the shape card. I don't think I can. Can I label the shape card? They need to set it up so we can label them. But this is shape card one. Um, huh. Yeah, shape card one. And yeah, it'll build it every time. Like, I think I have enough items left to do it again. No, I don't have enough item pipes, but... I mean, if we get more item pipes, I can show you guys again. Grab these rest of these item pipes. And we'll throw them in here. Throw them in the chest up top. Reset the lever. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. Um, so now that we have that done, that's going to make our life a lot easier. Uh, so we can actually set up a dropper. Let's get a button. And we need to have a dropper for each one, really. And so that's what we can do. We can sit there and take this dropper. And we'll set up a dropper for some of the common ones that we're going to be using um, for right now. So let me see. Let me go ahead and break this one for now. Pick you up. And we'll just use some building blocks. To set up our first dropper. Oh, that needs to go up higher, actually. There we go. 
And then we should that should work perfectly fine with the dropper facing downward. Oh yeah, that shouldn't give us any problems. Slap a button on there. Um, does that actually affect the field? Looks like it does. Maybe you have to go even higher. I might actually have to go higher. Hmm. Or was there like a ghost block in the way or something? Nope, that affects it. Okay. So yeah, we have to definitely go higher. Let's try putting it here. And just see how this works. I mean, like I said, later on we can set this up to actually be automated. And let's break. Oh yeah, that works now. And we can throw a button on there, like we do like we did before. Let's actually get our item pipe fixed. And we can throw this in here, put our button there. Hit the button. And look at that. Perfect. So we can kind of keep this thing stocked with the items that we need. And really all we gotta do is just walk up and hit the button. Lovely. Uh, this actually worked out fairly nice. Um, and of course thanks to Direwolf's video to uh, kind of helping me uh, figure this out. Because I've actually never used the scanner before, believe it or not. But uh, he did a pretty good job of explaining how this thing worked. And I was able to kind of get this out. So props to Dire Man. Um, props to him. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Uh, we're going to need to set up this. And I'm not going to set up the shape stuff for it yet. Even though it won't take very long to set up the shape card. Because we already have the predefined... You know what? Let's just set, set up a shape card. It's so cheap to make a shape card. Uh, let's, let's just do it. All right, so we just have aluminum. Uh, we surround the aluminum uh, with, or we surround this uh, signalum with aluminum. Pop that in there. Um, we're gonna take our shape card, and let's take this, set this to a three by three. Like so, leave the off offset, of course, like we had to last time. Um, and we'll take this, and we'll I mean, it's not set right yet. Uh, let's, let's move the shape again. I still have to go up to the 10. So I can kind of see everything. There we go. Um, so it does look like it's sim still centered. Sort of. Right? It looks like it is to me. So let's try this again. It may automatically be set. Yeah, it looks like it's automatically set. Okay, so, the, oh, it's the offset on the actual machine itself. Oh, so if you leave this here, it, it, it saves the offset. Sweet, so now we save the card. So this is set to scan ID one. I thought this one was also scan ID one. Do we need multiple scanners? I wonder. If that's set to scan ID 1, and we break this, I just want to make sure because, I mean, it could be set to still be scan ID 1. You have two cards that are scan ID 1. Um, they just have different materials related to them. That could be the case. I just want to make sure before I do this. And this is actually a good kind of show and tell, I guess, of this setup. Okay, so we'll put that in there. So that's all the blocks we need. Let's swap this out. There's really not a good way of us telling the difference on these. Hmm, that's going to be an issue. But this needs to be 714. So we'll change that to 714. And that should put us at the same offset. And it should show, and let's build.
Okay. Um, now, let's break this. I have no way of telling my chips apart, though. My cards. This could get uh, complicated. Fairly quickly, if we don't have multiple builders set up. Okay. So let's take this shape card out. Put this shape card in. Okay. So yeah, this does matter. Um, this is affecting it. Okay, so yeah, we'll have to have different scanners set up, right? I just, I feel like that's how it is. Hmm, okay, so I'm pretty sure my hunch was correct. Um, I definitely have to have two scanners. I have to have a scanner for every single setup. Um, that could get kind of expensive, but... I mean, it is kind of worth it, though, to be honest. I mean, I, I say expensive, to be honest. It's not that expensive. Um, we have an abundance of diamond. We have an abundance of just about everything at this point. But now I can kind of demonstrate this and show it to you. Okay, so what I did... Let me go ahead and throw all the items required for each step. Let's throw all those in there. So those are in there. We have two separate shape cards. Now I can actually identify them and separate them. Can I turn this into glass? What is, what is this? What? I guess not. Okay. Uh, we'll worry about, worry about that later. Okay. So I have a scanner here. This is scan ID 1. This is scan ID 2. For every scanner you have, it'll increase the ID number. Um, this now has some charge in it. I don't need to really have that anymore. It holds a lot of power. Um, so you just have to kind of uh, move your offset because the offset is based on the scanner itself, not on the card. So you need to set your scanner with your shape card in there. So like this is my one for two. When I scan this, um, there was something in there. So there was a, a block set up in there. I haven't actually linked it. So uh, currently it's not set up right now. This one's set up. You can actually remove these and they'll still work. Um, but I actually removed the scan. It doesn't really matter. Um, that was just scanning for the shape cards uh, dimension. But, like I said, this will work. If I put the scanner shape card 2 in, it will build the one for the RF tools. So let's put the, the shape card in there. And make sure the offset is set correctly. I think. Oh, this one may actually have wiped it. It may have got wiped whenever I just changed the settings there. Let's try this one. So this one will work. Oh man, I really just rebuilt that for it for me to just break the thing. Oh well, we'll uh, we'll get that fixed. All right, I got it fixed, so now it should technically work uh, for both of them. So I have this shape card in here, which is ID one, which makes the Tesla machine frame. This one will make the RF tools. So let me go ahead and get the the few things we need over here just to kind of throw them in. I'm pretty sure this is the one for the Tesla frame. I think. Yeah, this uh, this makes the iron casing for the other block. Which one is it for? I think it might be this one. No. Uh, <laughs> I gotta figure out which one it is. So let's take a look. One of these big boy machines will have it. There we go. Oh, we need a ruby. Okay. So a ruby. So we have the ruby, and we're also going to need one of those. And that'll just let us build it. Uh, I don't want to really waste too much more time on this, um, simply because this is just set up so that we could build the structure fast. So let's build it. Bam. Throw that in there. And then wait for this one to get done, and we can actually replace the card. And swap the card out. I can just throw the card up here. Um, we'll just need to put a screen or something and tell us which card number equals what. And that'll make it life a little bit easier on us. So this is going to make it. And then let's go ahead and build this one. Yep, that worked. Oh, the ruby. 
It won't accept the ruby. That's not good. Um, did I make it wrong? Silver sheet metal. I made it out of aluminum. I'm a derp. Uh, but I can easily fix that. Uh, but yeah, this is what we're going to need. All right, I went ahead and got everything set up and ready to go. So let's retry this. There we go. Now it's silver. Now I can hit the button, drop the ruby in, and look at it go. So sweet. So we're actually going to need one of the machine frames to kind of get started with the end of today's video. Um, because we're going to automate and so really we're going to set up the process for which we get plastic in industrial for going, which is kind of cool, actually. Um, but man, I'm, I'm really liking the builder setup. This actually is going to make it a lot easier to just swipe and just put my items in here and I don't have to manually build it because that is honestly the worst part. I don't, I don't like building the things over and over and over again. It kind of gets repetitive, especially when you're making as many machine frames as I've made already. Um, but yeah, this is the Tesla core machine case. And uh, this guy is used for industrial for going. So it's good that we have that process set up and ready to go. Okay. So let's go ahead and clear out a few things. And because, because mainly because we're going to be making a few things. So let's go into industrial. And we're going to look up. First, the first thing is the tree fluid extractor. This guy requires iron gear and a furnace. Now, we can make furnaces a lot easier now. Look at this. Misty cobblestone, which you get from the rocks that you get from gathering everything in there. You can now make furnaces that way. So let's just make a few thur uh, furnaces because I'm sure we're going to need them later on. And let's go ahead and make this. I'm pretty sure I have everything for it, right? So there's a tree fluid extractor. I'm actually going to make a few of these. Uh, f why not four of them? Why not four? Let's just make four of them for right now. Okay. And then we're going to need a... Processor. A latex processing unit. So we're going to need this guy for processing what is pulled out of the tree. Now this is what requires the machine uh, core. So let's get that. And then we're going to need some fluid ducts. Just a couple of them. So I have the fluid ducts here. Uh, we're going to need some placers. I think a good placer is going to be the placers from... I mean, we have a vanilla block placer. wonder how that works. But we also have this block placer, which is an auto placer. Which, honestly, I think is going to be better. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be better off using this one. We'll just grab some lapis. Convert that lapis over. And now we'll have that forever. Okay. So let's go ahead and make this thing. So now we have an auto placer. And we're going to need some wood. I'm going to grab a couple stacks for right now. And I think we can set this up inside, and it's not even going to matter too much. We will need, I do believe, some... I hate that you can't search in here. We are going to need some servos. I think those will be fine. Actually, yeah, we'll just use servos. I know we can use other, other methods, but servos will be fine for now. So, the Lake Tax Processing Unit, we're going to set that up, honestly, right here, because it requires water. Um, everything else should be pretty easy to set up. We'll take these guys right here, and what we can do with them, let's see. We could probably set this up pretty easy by placing it in the floor, because um, I'm going to use four of them. And we'll have an auto placer going up top. So let me go ahead and get the few items I need for that. Now that they think about it, let's go ahead and throw this up here. We'll have the item placer facing downward. Like that. So it places the wood there. And then we'll set up our latex extractors 
here. One here. One here. There's going to be some there. One there. And that should be perfect, right? Okay. So our wood gets placed. Just places it automatically. I think these automatically face the wood. Yes, they do. So they face in the direction that you point them to. So they should all be facing the right direction, I think. And as you can see, they're already creating latex. Pretty cool. And let's just hook these all together. And we'll just run the pipes over. We're actually going to need some more. Now, this fluid is not hot, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about your pipes exploding. That should not be an issue. We do have some hardened glass laying around here somewhere. So let's just connect these. And voila! It's connected. But it's not pulling. It's because we need a servo. Or you could use um, a... I think it's called a receiver. Or it's called a... Um, a retriever node. Probably use a retriever node and it would work just fine. Let's actually try that out. I don't, I don't use them very often, so using a retriever node would probably be a little bit better. Um, do we have anything cheaper? They all require eyes of ender. Yep, no, we're going servo route. I thought that that was cheaper, but no. Eyes of ender is not cheaper at all. So yeah, just throw these on here, turn off your red, redstone signal. And there we go. Pretty nice. Now I did place it over here. The setup can definitely be moved and not not right in the middle of the aisle way, of course. This is just really early on. And so what it's going to do is because you know, you're going to build up some latex. And uh, we're actually going to hook some power over here. I think we could totally reach... The power over here, no big deal. I'm gonna avoid the water. There's gotta be power laying around here somewhere. There it is. And right up there is our block. And there we go. And this bad boy is gonna get powered. And as you can see, it's going to create these tiny dry rubber that is then used to make the dry rubber once you craft it like that or you can place it in a factorizer and then you can smelt it and it makes plastic. And plastic is used for tons of stuff in industrial foregoing. And that is going to get us started there. Pretty cool. So we did get this complete. So we're just waiting on plastic and we already have enough that we can actually make it. And actually get ourselves that one piece. Perfect. This actually, this should go pretty fast as long as you have this placing wood. Um, all of these are working. Four of them together I think is, is really fast. And before long you'll have tons of this and you won't know what to do with it all. You'll have so much plastic that you really won't. You'll have no idea what you're doing with it all. And there we go. There's our plastic. So it says, with one of those two alloys, I can make industrial machines. The first goal is to make plastic. And voila, we've made plastic. Ooh, I see disk storage there. My compound, pink he, which opens over here, says apparently there is some pink slimy essence in each mob. Um, a, sp uh, a special machine can kill... And extract this essence. I hope it will be. I hope you will be able to use it. Good. So the mob slaughter factory. Hmm. This is. I don't exactly remember what that pulls out. I think it kills mobs and you get pink slime from it. And you'll need pink slime later on. So that'll be something we'll have to work towards. But uh, guys, today's been a pretty cool episode. We got that semi-automated and so that way things are set up for us and we can just build it. And we also got plastic. 
started with industrial foregoing. So I hope you guys are enjoying these episodes. If you are, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And as always, thanks for watching. Let's go.